Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a newish campaign in Kaiser Rudix, which we're playing as the Socialist Union of America in 1941, in which basically we're the CSA and we won the Civil War and uh, Capital Social Chicago, but Technocracy Incorporated gets to work. Defeating the revisionist Technocrats of Loeb and CCOT Coalition, Howard Scott and Technocracy Inc. now rise as the one and true heralds of American technocracy, pushing for an unaltered version or vision of technocracy tied to the unique ideas of Scott and Technocracy Inc. America is now in store for social accelerationism and mildly authoritarian technocratic oligarchism under a democratic framework. A democratic framework. Alice of Scott and Technocracy Inc. We finally won. Oh, look at that. Look at this guy. Looks like an old, defeated, maybe LBJ, huh? Hmm. The mayor of serious young man. But we're going to begin with his part of the focus tree. Uh, let's see where's ah. Victory of Technocracy Inc. With well, a foul fake technocrat and internationalist Love Stone finally cast down, revealed to be the tyrant he truly is, it would seem that Technocracy Inc. finally has its day. Led by the enigmatic and ingenious Howard Scott, our movement of rationality and efficiency shall bring a truly egalitarian and prosperous utopia to America and beyond. Has countercooed at J. Love Stone. Reject the false technocrats. Oh, more daily political power. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. Educate the masses on technocratic uh, ideology. Most members of other parties and most of their followers are unsure of the rules of or the rule of the technocrats, commonly uh, misconstruing our movement with full scient scientocracy or other forms of insane theory. We should educate not only our fellow socialists but all in America on the truths and benefits of technocracy, utilizing our contacts and connections in mass media industries in aid to aid in spreading our message, a celebration of our hero. And for America. Uh, Congress is debating whether the anthem should become the official anthem of the true technocratic union of America. Several songs will become the candidates to debate. The question is, which shall be voted on to become the official anthem of America? Solidarity forever. It's power and union. This line is your lamb. Solidarity forever. Uh, seeking to surprise our director-in-chief on his birthday while also trying to celebrate our recent political successes. Like also Technocracy Inc. has baked a cake for Scott in the shape of one of his most beloved energy certificates, complete with pipe ice, pipe icing directions that adorn the top and sides of the lovely pastry. Presenting to Scott during the daily board meeting and as others droned on about energy rationing and other new possible holidays for technocratic calendar, the boardroom was instantly lit up with fanfare and glee as all celebrated and sang joyous tunes for our director. As the crowd sang happy birthday to a bashful Scott, another one of his close friends and associates, Harold Loeb, smushed a slice of the cake in Scott's face in a jovial expression of camaraderie. All in attendance had a blast, and it was a nice respite from his never-ending hard work required to build Utopia. All hail Howard Scott. Oh. And we have 113 political power, 1.13 every single day, not bad. Uh, I was trying to build, rebuild America after the Civil War, and we are trying to uh, invade Mexico too, because we're Americans. Reject the face of uh, the false technocrats. False technocrats such as Burnham and Lovestone have only muddied our movie, movement's message and given our genius idea a bad name. We must bring the long arm of the law to the traitors of American people standing before them trial to show each and every person in our nation that the record espoused by this madman is not to be trusted and not indicative of our technocracy, Inc. And before we go to war, oh, I love bombs. Cool, cool, cool. We got plenty of ship stuff doing that, anyways. And let's go to have a little bit of fun. Should do okay here. In theory. I'll get one of those done too. Why not? Uh, how's the party doing? Intelligence agency party? It's all parties to me. Ah, uh, baby, Mexico. I love it. I love it. Maximum Mexico. That was in the last. We're going to lose a lot more when we get further down south, but that's yeah, okay. Whatever. He needs more planes in general, though. I, I I just never build enough planes. I really don't. Radar. Get some radar too. Why not? Um, and let's grab some stew. That'd be nice. But happy now. April. Well, we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm as we go down to Mexico, which doesn't make sense. Hot coffee in a hot place. Come on, Smedley brother. Do your best. Actually, do we finish? We finish our land option. Uh, what do we want? Breakthrough? Sure, we'll go with breakthrough. Here. Oh, pretty good. Got some aggression back. Oh boy. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's gonna take a while. I've done this when we play this out lobe, but. Three. Why does it take so long? That's way better. We'll just take a Panama and go to Costa Rica that way too. Um, a newer and better technical alliance. Evolve past partisan politics. Huh. The useless partisan politicians replaced. 
Okay. A new price system. Interesting. Let's go with this one. Evolve past partisan politics. Society's progress past the need for systems solely dependent on representative democracy and concomitant partisan politics. We should break past the rigors of factionalism and establish a technocratic political system based around appointed scientists and engineers. Or about petty partisanism and political bias so local uh, local elective government shall still exist. The media by technocratic councils. As these brain acts that we shall entrust the federal government with, finally freeing our nation from factionalism and power, popularity party, let's become a Republican democracy. Fall of Mexico City. Rebuild the West. Six can only do one at a time, but whatever. Gonna need Marines for sure. Yeah, you go there too, that's fine. Not about 30,000 versus 117, which is still not bad. Yeah, let's go. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Chipancingo. Huh? Chipancingo. Break through a lot of things here. That's all we believe in here is just break breaking through. Nice. 41. Output, even though we probably don't need too much of it right now. Good. False technocrats, no thank you. A new press system. Let's do a new and better technical alliance. Without technical technical alliance, Scott's precursor organization, Technox Inc., that existed as a council of scientists, engineers, and theorists, never quite reached its goal of educating the world on the wasteful funds of wastefulness of capitalism. Well, not failing its goal a second time, the technical alliance shall rise again, but in a new form. Formed as an international movement attached to Technox Inc., this new technical alliance. Oh, my apologies. I'll take all that, and I'll also take all this too. Thank you. Um. Uh, formed as an international movement attached to Technoxy Inc., this new technical alliance seeks to spread our ideology and to unite the like minded nations under a technocratic banner. That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. That's not against you. Uh, that's in case. So these guys are gone. Um, also in U24, it's probably a bad idea to send 24 down here, but whatever. And I want to send U7 over here. No, actually, you know what? You send U7 over here then. Makes it a little easier. Throw a couple things over there if you can, too. We we'll definitely need some radar and air base. Maximize the roads right there, too. We'll put up a lot more roads as well. Take these guys out, too. Um, yeah, and have a, a new fly for the Technate. Well, their new Technate organizer must not have sounded a banner rally behind before us last few designs, with one design even drafted by Director in Chief Scott himself. What shall we design? The Great Red Monad with stripes is designed by Scott. The white Red Monad with stripes. Monad on a field crimson. With the stars on a split. Red White Field. Mmm, red, white. Well, I wish we had options to see what it could be like. <clears throat> now, are we Japan? Like Communist Japan or something now? Hmm. New Pressism, expel incompetent businessmen. We have no political power as is, but that's okay. A criminal is a person with a predatory instinct without sufficient capital to form a corp corporation. Who needs businessmen anyways? They're nothing but greedy leeches preying on the innocent and sucking, uh, suckling at the teat of wretched mother capitalism. They should all be replaced with engineers, scientists, theorists, technicians, statisticians, and other hard-working and skilled laborers. Uh, statisticians. For only these experts truly know how to run an economy and a business venture, of course. I've done a few of these over here on the right. Um, social revolution, women's liberation. Don't want to do social revolution instead. Of this one. You know, I could use more political power than manpower or anything else. But enough free and home of the brave was anything but we have our work cut off for us to rid of America of corruption, racism, and chauvinism. Yeah, first we must tear up the very core of all these things, the capitalist system itself. I like that one too. Um, so we're gonna go to keep going to go to war with Panema. That's gonna take a while though. But we have no political power, which sucks. But you know it is what it is. Which is why we're gonna do what? Uh that political power would be nice. Negative 19 is not great. I lose even more here too, but we should, so we should weigh new price system. 
We're getting more political power, but prices should be decided on how much energy it takes to produce specific goods, and so the current system which is wasteful and unnecessary. A new price system shall be created on this policy, centered around this idea of energy accounting, in order to create a truly innovative, egalitarian, and efficient economy that is fair for all without being wasteful like capitalism, and without falling into corruption and mismanagement like traditional socialism. So that hurts our resources to market. We'll give more political power, though. Okay, we can do that one next one now. And we're playing green. Well, these guys are all dead. Uh, so this is becoming for a long time. The Mexican state must fall, and as workers grant us the same freedom we have achieved for ourselves. Will Mexico has achieved more progress than most nations in the past decades? It's clear to us that by now, they need our system. Our systems are keeping these, some of these promises the revolutionaries made. Mexico City, here we already are at. <laughs> we're already there, yay. Free media battery, so. Nice. World Revolution, the revolutionaries at home. Social democracy. I don't want any more social democracy. Peace leagues. Pacifist education. Totalism. Change popularity. Totalism. Pl minus ten percent. Then plus five percent. Peace so socialism. Oh, we could. I don't want to go to war though. Hmm. Let's take a look at the tree. No, you know what? We'll go to this one anyways. New legal equality. Racial liberation. Probably uh, deal with the ODP. If you remember that, please go ahead. Oh, racial liberation. Uh, well, you know what? Let's do. Go ahead and do what? What are we here? Rebuild the military industrial complex. With most of the military industrial complex in the East, the Civil War has devastated the old munitions, weapons, factories that made up America's war industry. As it became high value targets for bombing and preferred hiding spot of persistent enemy defenders. I wish to be ready for the next war. Investing in rebuilding the military industrial complex is one of our priorities. Now, everyone, it's time for you, me, and uh, destroying pretty much the rest of Central America. Because why not? We love Central America like this. Uh, can we go to war them too? We should be able to. Come on, please, please, please. We just want to kill you all off too. That's all. Um, so we did do a social revolution. Uh, up next, we're gonna come over here and expel and common businessmen. How do we enforce a technocratic work schedule? That sounds pretty nice. Two more military factories, 24, se 24 hours, seven days a week. That's the price the workers should pay for a truly technocratic society. A form of the national work schedule in order to achieve the goal of uninterrupted production, maximize efficiency, and maximum profitability of resources, transport vehicles, and entertainment facilities. We should, however, avoid the dread of weekend effect. According to our calculations, it would be enough for every citizen to work a cycle of four consecutive days, four hours a day, followed by three days off. By tilling the days and working hours into seven groups, industry and services can be operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't worry, we aren't heartless. Of course, they'll get holidays too. Hmm. But in the meantime, Colombia. You, me, and a uh, good time. Oh, we have no political power. Actually, uh, it's, about this. it's exactly the same. Just wanted to see, because we never have enough political power since I annexed Canada and Mexico and all of them, you know, like normal. It's not a true American campaign with a uh, Mr. Mocha lover without us just butchering Mexico. Ah, uh, Costa Rica. Thank you. Take all of you. Ah, uh, take you. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. We're going to take them all. Do it like this. You're not beating us here. No, no, no. Ah, see, they're not going to be happy about that, but you know what? I don't care about their happiness. I care about what we can do for America. No, oh, you can do that mission. Uh, there you go. Concentrate industry is not bad. Get some extraction. Uh, we just need... Oh, Fate of Panama. Oh, crap. We still need just find these guys, too. We're just going to take friggin' forever, but whatever. Which sucks, so. Uh, reconcile the Bell Bellamyites. Technocratic industry. All hell, Scott. Get a research slot. That's pretty cool. Um, but we're already pretty good with the research as of right now. Another research slot, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll have at least one more episode after this, but I do want to go through here. World Revolution. Um, on the beach. Technocracy for everybody. Revolutionaries. Monroeism. We could do that too. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I've done, I think I've done both sides, maybe? Passive education. Well, that sounds like more like a radical socialist type of thing. Oh, prisons overflowing with reactionaries. Nobody could have expected a crime and punishment system would become so overstuffed as to require this decision. The numerous small schisms of the SBA Fletcher government, uh, with its fair share of detractors, as well as expected resistance. Thousands upon thousands being fed, clothed, and housed in our dime for the crimes against the people. Our more foreign minded are worried that the prison will be a breeding ground for reactionary thought, so a working man should be diverted to work camps. They'll be able to pay back the state for what they stole from the people. The American Workers' Party has put forth a proposal to make soldiers of prisoners young enough to serve to prove their loyalty to socialism or to totalism. Vanguard's believe that we've been too lenient on these traitors and we must execute the traitors of the highest standing in the prisons as a rebellion is surely about to come. The Catholic Workers' Movement strongly disagrees, claiming that, all ex that the exile and life elsewhere is the most Christian thing to do. 
execute the traders of high standing, make soldiers of them, take the rookie man into the rook camps, exile them to Canada. Well, I mean, we already took them over, so I want stability would be nice. Oopsie, war revolution. We may prevail in the civil war, but that's only the beginning. There are many among us who demand that we spread the revolution abroad, first across Western Hemisphere, and then the world. It's a great effort on our part and on part of our people. But if we fail to act now, it's possible that imperialist and capitalist regimes will extinguish the fire of the revolution in Europe and elsewhere. We can let this happen. We can do both these. Actually, we can go down this way. Denounce international treachery. All to the revolution. True revolutionary faction. Family Code 1941. With the social revolution in full swing, Congress passed the Family Code of 1941. Family Code, the revolutionary code that is driven by an ideological desire to wither away from the capitalist model of family to be replaced by a socialist model of familial tree or free unions based on mutual love and respect, as well as decriminalizing homosexual behavior. Thus, to that end, uh, to end the code included a number of revolutionary changes. It abolishes all impediments to marriage. The biggest one being the abolition of mis uh, <clears throat> anti miscegenation laws. <coughs> Civil marriage is not the only legal type of marriage. The code establishes no grounds of divorce, with both spouses receiving equal division of the property at the time of divorce. Also abolishes the concept of illegitimacy. Now, all children are entitled to parental support and equal rights under the law. Furthermore, in accordance with the revolutionary laws regarding the family, adoption of children that were made homeless by the revolution is subsidized. The European concept of free love is still under consideration. The outrage of many traditional-minded treaty unionists. While well, anarchists leading supporters support the laws, already causing fights in Congress and strikes among many on the right, even the center of the USA, a CSA. These citizens announce the laws anti family, anti union, anti worker, with many labeling the anarchists as head hedonists. The world is changing. Alpha Revolution, Save the Iberian Revolution, Paint Brazil Red, um, Gateway to South America. I mean, technically, we're already doing that. Oh, Mexico's Founder Revolution. Oh. Socialize. I mean, I already took them out. Greater New England. Oh, sweet Colombia. A socialist empire. That's not bad. A world without chains. And Japanese imperialism. Russian Republic. Socialist liberation. A truly red Peru. I kind of wish we could do both. I go down here. Maybe it requires this one. I kind of go this way though too. American aid. All the revolution. I don't want to do collaboration. <clears throat> I just want to kill people. Just for robots, it's minus 30%. Well, maybe actually we'll go down this way. I really shouldn't home. We'll get more social democracy. I don't want social democracy. Uh, peace League. Well, we're definitely not going to be a Peace League. We get weekly stability, though. That's pretty nice. War just for robots, it's on us, which is pretty good. A lot of political power. Invest in the future. More totalism. Peace through socialism. More weekly stability. Lose some totalism. Get some totalism. Yeah. I do want to go down this way and go down here, so. Revolution home. While we care for all workers, we cannot be an effective nation. We do not focus on stability first. Our own stability. And this way, we'll better serve the workers at home and by setting a positive example and being more prepared for the future abroad as well. The revolution will never be defeated. Uh, oh, well, we can't do that. Well, we can't even go down that way. Well, crap. My bad. I want this one, though, at least. Revolutionized Monroeism. Uh, world tension increase, whatever. The original Monroe Doctrine is dead, gone in the fire of the Second American Civil War. However, there are so many among us who think it's natural for, for us to protect our native hemisphere from foreign encroachment. Not only that, but they also say we must protect the regimes from one another. Let's reinstitute some of the old Monroe Doctrine ideas and start to promote the growth of new regimes in Latin America. Doing so will eliminate the need for the imperialism of old, as we will instead control all these countries through the political leverage and economic power. The revolution shall spread across the Western Hemisphere. Nice. Better Panama. Um, American logistical departments. Spock is going to go down by 10%. That's pretty good. Free the new world. Oh, look at that. More daily political power plus 0.2 plus 2% 2 more um, non core manpower. That's nice. Our place is not in the old world, but the new. Our focus shall be on achieving dominance in the North and South America and standing tall as independent syndicalist power. <clears throat> Totalist power. Rather than acting as subservient partners to the Europeans. Let's work to free brothers from the shackles of capitalism, of course. Sure, why not? Uh, maybe give us some of that too, because we could probably use that. Um, War Plan Red. Well, this is going to bypass. If you want to do this, please go right ahead. The Caribbean Revolution. That would be kind of nice. The history of the Caribbean is filled with the Europeans and American exploitation. Most who live in this region unfortunately still suffer under horrible conditions, and we should do something about it. Let's work to bring the revolution to the Caribbean and make sure that at last, the Caribbean people can break their chains. Uh, Arkansas, the Balamiists. Balami was a part of the original technocratic ideology, but it was never technocratic himself at all. In spite of the creation of the technocratic ideology and with America, especially the industry rich Northeast, harboring so many modern Bellamyites in different varieties, it would be foolish not to reconcile his followers. Legal, legal equality. Uh, or racial liberation. 
Social revolution, racial liberation, legal equality. Well, I don't know. I, w I still think we'd probably do both. We'd do racial liberation too. We liberate the working class, but what are the millions of abused minority citizens in our country? Anything short of criminalization, racism will fall short of what we want to achieve. Jim grows dead, fell by the uh, mighty American proletariat. Or new legal equality. Foolish in vain is a working man who makes the color of his skin, a stepping stone to his imaginary superiority. Proletariat of all colors and creeds fought and bled to build a new America. The loyal immigrant shall also be afforded natural born citizenship in the spirit of emancipation. I could do this one instead. I mean, racial liberation. I did this one, the new legal equality with Loeb as well, but I can only do this one just because, like, we're all equal. We're all equally suffering here. You know. Revolutionary education. Another research slap. Academia has been the nurturing mother of many revolutionaries, but the education system itself is inherently reactionary. And all of America's history was built to produce more obedient workers, more career capitalists, and heartless politicians. That ends. And now. as you can see here, we have about, uh, well, a little bit of a war with Colombia and whatnot. We lost 9,000, we lost 65,000, as it should be. Um, but we're having Ernest Hemingway, who is a naval liaison and an improvisation expert, push his way through uh, Colombia and uh, basically Venezuela. And we're having a good old time with it. Um, it's not perfect, that's why we're on Mountaineers, but we didn't get the Mountaineers done fast enough, but whatever. Uh, but we'll be doing okay around here, they're attacking us, we're attacking them. Uh, let's go look, quick look, see at them, they're out of manpower, and we're distributing corporate wealth. One of the few things Haywood agreed with the villain as long is on the wealth, the redistribution. Haywood's wartime ration had given way to piece of legislation to prevent the robber baronies he had fought all his life. This is an act in the form of his final, final wishes of Congress, the expropriation of all assets owned by a single person in excess of $10 million. Howard Scott's taken this one step further to decry the idea of corporations, and has threatened to declare the legal concept of corporations to be illegal the very next day. The city offices were inundated with hundreds, if not thousands, of formal requests to dissolve our corporations into the component businesses, and applications for new consortiums in the same breath. As Officer Howard Scott, that is just a ploy for the robber barons to hide their business practice from the government, and has ordered a moratorium on reclassification until wealth, distribu wealth redistribution is over. You won't get away that easily. No, you won't. As well, next up, we'll go to war with Ecuador as well. Excuse me. Oh boy. Slowly trying to push through here as we revolutionize Monroeism, of course. Uh, we read this earlier. Free the new world. Yes, please. You actually might be able to help them out. I do that, yeah. We're attacking us. We're attacking them. We're still struggling, but it's level 3 now, which is pretty nice. Becoming an organizer, an infantry leader, of course. And pretty much everything else. He's becoming everything we ever wanted. Lose quite a few guys, but that's okay. I give them a lot of experience here. Plus, oh, and they have no map out either. And they... How many guns they got? We don't know. We have no idea. Pretty normal. Ooh. Sorry for those guys, huh? Well then. Cryptology. But we'll get there eventually. Um, ports. Connect the ports, please. Do that. It's gonna look like a giant friggin' mess, but that's alright. That's what it usually is, anyways. Read the new world. Ooh, improved artillery upgrades. That should make it harder. Better military police. Even better military police. I hope we're, I hope we're using that. Uh, Masters of the West. We have achieved our goal. America stands tall on its own. Master of the new world and free from the chains of capital domination. Regardless of what happens in Europe and elsewhere, we know that the West at least has fought for its freedoms to be granted victory. American Department of Logistics. Logistics department, I should say. If we are truly to control and influence the Western Hemisphere and lands beyond, we must be invested in better logistics. It's not Western Europe, where the small countries make it easy to conduct wars on that scale. Our borders are with our neighbors are large, and if we want to go anywhere else, we'll have to cross vast amounts of oceans to get there. Let's improve our naval and logistical capabilities or capacity so that we can take on these challenges. Which would be very nice. Even though we have more than enough convoys for now. We only have, what, 3,000? Yeah, only 3,000. What happy July, everybody. Uh, the press menu. Really making them learn a lot. Becoming an organizer, infantry, infantry leader, rapidly, quite rapidly. Uh, expert heroism, strike Black Legion cells, War Plan Red has been bypassed, Caribbean Revolution, just so we can go to war as fast as we possibly can. Power of the Red Navy hurts our amphibious invasion speed, uh, uh, which sucks, but uh, capacity. Which, which basically goes back to normal. Our Red Navy isn't much yet, but with some investment, it could become something to be feared. So let's invest in our Navy, we'll dominate the seas, we'll never be invaded by a country from a distant land across the sea, and perhaps one day we'll conduct invasions of our own. Absolutely. Oh, hello. Mm, 13 days left. 
We do another one. Why not? Hey, Colombia and uh, Venezuela is gone now. Yay! Why build trips when you just take everyone else's? That will get blown up anyways. Nice. Anyway, you're doing such a good job. I'm going to keep throwing you down here. At this point, why build military factories when you can just take them from other people? You know? Not right, what do we got? Better anti air? Very nice. We do got some better tanks, some better anti air. Um, let's do. I'll do this one first because we're going to get hit by political power stuff, so. Advanced competing machine is very nice. Land redistribution of clashes with local warlords. For the mansions of the Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Carnegies, and the Vanderbilts, the sharecroppers who run company stores or land of the United States still belongs to the capitalists. The worst example being Murphy Ranch out in California, which is a hive of silver shirt activity during the war and took months to starve out by our forces. It been decided by Congress to exercise expropriation on these estates. Many of the southern and western estates have given over, been given over to local communes and established public housing for the people. As expected, civilian armed resistance has cost us some lives, but to a few had expected our own Red Guard to be ineffective at expropriation. One particular tough nut, a crack was in Montana where the initial militia sent in turned traitor and held on a large estate for the war its warlord owner for eight months before own Red Guard were forced to intervene again. The program seems to be working, however, so there's no reason to reconsider. Who would have thought? Warlords. Military occupation, of course. Columbia. Military occupation, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. And down here. Uh, they have a good okay amount of manpower. We will go to war with them within a month, which is actually very nice. In the meantime, uh, let's talk about mountaineers. Because I we obviously need some mountaineers here. CSA resistance, huh? Is that what we have? There's motorized. Well, that's not even motorized. That's mechanized. Because I would like some mechanized divisions, too. Anything else here? Uh, I guess you can have that too if you really want it. Earthquake hits Guatemala. If you know about that, please go ahead. Uh, Red Guard. Oh, we're not even using military police. Well, that's stupid. We need them. Peruvian Revolution. Masters of the West. Death Charge Mortars. 1942. Get some better arty, but we can't do that, so we get some better guns instead. And we will go to war them eventually too. Um, in the meantime. Three divisions. So you say resistance, yes please. Not a bad division. Not perfect, by any means, but not bad. Supplies do suck, but that's why I didn't make them super huge, yep. But a lot of logistics and whatnot. How are we doing for planes and whatnot as well? What do we have up here? Keep working on them. Alright, so that one's done, so now Peru's next, right? Oh, absolutely. 155 days. It's so long, dude. 155 days. My goodness. 200 more political power and way more stability is very nice, actually. Yeah. Could just use more planes and whatnot. But that's a pretty common thing for us. Ecuador. Let's see what we can do. Marines. Fighting under by yourself. Oh, infantry fighting by yourself is probably not a great idea, but whatever. Oh, my God. They are very tough. Oh, wait, there's only one division attacking that direction. What the heck? Um, let's see. It's gonna cost us quite a bit to get down here, but you know, whatever. Hey, encircled, nice. If you're walking, help just just destroy that militia division immediately, anyways. There you go. Did that actually help us out a lot? Yeah, it did. We are fighting over a river. I, it's hard to see sometimes the rivers. Maybe that could be like a graphical update or something, or maybe there's something I could do. Because even with these front lines, these huge front lines. It can be pretty hard to see. Nice. Oh, if you remember this, please go ahead. Um, socialist liberation. Well, we could do that one. I much prefer socialism in one nation, though. Back to Chilean revolution. Bo break Bolivian oligarchs. Finish South American reaction. A truly red Peru. Um, I kind of want all this stuff here. Socialism in one nation. The international factions in our country are naive. They think that we have the ability to invade countries thousands of miles away, but we have barely re even recovered from the Civil War. If we overreach, we could lose everything we've worked for instead. Let us focus our efforts on our neighbors and ourselves and create socialism in one nation. One, two continents. Um, anything we really care about? We're not getting any weekly stability yet. Um, stability is important. I'll grab that. Why not? We need to come down here too, but whatever. We'll get there. We will get there as I want Hemingway to learn as much as possible. Ooh, look. He's an organizer and an infantry leader now, too. Nice. Just trying to buff him as much as we possibly can. 
Good. All right, everyone, I apologize about that, but the game keeps crashing, unfortunately. So I've already used cons commands. We're using focus autocomplete, but we'll read through all these and hopefully read some of the events and then call it an episode or really a video since, unfortunately, the game keeps crashing for us. Reorganize the Committee on Technocracy. We should take the steps to reorganize the long-dead Committee on Technocracy and reconcile the higher lobe and its technocratic group <coughs> together. All technocrats across America shall come together. For the betterment of all mankind, we attempt to build the world's first working technique. <coughs> And of course, we can solve the blemiests. Bele blemiests. Replace monetary metric. Drastic as the decision may be, the monetary metric has done us no good in the past. Sky has brought forward a solution: the energy metric. Taking the idea of energy counting even further, money itself shall be done away with, replaced with energy credits and energy certificates. With some total of all the energy needed to produce goods known, it's possible to allocate an equal share of the produ uh, production capacity to each system. This means that each system will receive energy certificates, which then can be used to allocate production capacity to produce goods they desire. Within an ecologically sustainable context, for even planning for the future. The system accounts for technological progression, citing that certificates could be replaced with a computer accounting system, where each person's allocation will be referred to as energy credits instead. <coughs> Though we may have pushed back against this idea, Scott and his loyal techn or technocrats know this would be the true way forward towards utopia. A technocratic industry. Industry has always been a dirty subject. The methods of the industrial economy have brought nothing but ruin. Constantly plowing where the environment of the common man, wasteful and polluting, doing ne nearly more damage than it does good. We shall bring our industry into the future by putting top scientists and engineers in charge of overseeing it. On the recommendations, we shall slowly reform every facet of our in industry until it's all in line with our strict and stringent standards of efficiency and safety. All hail Scott! All hail Howard Scott! It's a phrase every American should use every day. Scott has brought this country out of the dirt, dousing the fires of civil chaos and molding this once war torn American into a shiny new efficient utopia. More miraculously still, he's still working to bring this country to close for closer technocratic perfection. All shall salute this hero as his associates do, and all shall wear the technocratic uniform. A well-tailored double-breasted suit, gray shirt, and blue necktie, and the monad technocratic insignia on the lapel, as he wears himself. All in the nation should love and behold Scott, for all truly owe him everything that we have to enjoy in this new proletarian paradise. A continental technique. <coughs> Excuse me. A technique of the American continent has always been the final goal of the American technocratic movement. A united continent resolved under technocratic principles and working together in unison to build a true, fair utopia that optimizes the use of energy to assure abundance of prosperity. It must embrace the dream of continental government and bring change forward in life. Onward towards true technocracy, onward towards true North American technique. And a dream for me. Prosperity and modernity brought to our shores and has been hit hard. And is hit, has hit hard. Our technocratic dream has been realized and fulfilled. Energy and resource abundance have been achieved, and true socialism has flourished. All thanks to the great enigmatic Howard. We must rejoice for what, we, for what we've been saved, guided to a egalitarian and inefficient utopia by the ingenious Technocracy, Inc. Let's all rejoice and work together under the technocratic councils in order to go where no man has ever gone before, as we build the greatest state the world has ever seen. Which looks pretty good overall. But hopefully the game doesn't crash immediately, so we can read some of these events. Alright, come on. Nice. Oh, the flag even changed again. Look at that. Ah, compromise, synchronism, in the name of a strong union. With, uh, or, working with his former allies in the IWW, where he used to work as a research director, as well as a local bulimia, such as Nash, uh, Norma Walls, Lerman, and his group of varied socio eco socialists, Director in Chief Scott has begun to implement a series of various social policies and legislation aimed at fulfilling his side of the deal and bringing not only technocracy, but true socialism as well to the American people. With policies ensuring the protection of agrarian pursuits in the health of the biosphere, legislation cementing socialist workers' protections, benefits, and bargaining power, and rhetoric promising or promoting unionism, democratic socialism on a local level, and other aspects of American socialism are the foundation of a new technique, which will build a truly socialist utopia that stands as a beacon of leftist unity to the wider world. All socialists of America, no matter your dogma or theory, unite. Um, making an example. Technocratic directors are in a letter to the Director in Chief Howard Scott about a group of managers in Illinois Garment Factory who have abused their workers and embezzled resources from them. However, these managers have otherwise been loyal party members and supporters of the Scott regime. How should this be dealt with? Execute them? Or send them to frontline shock troops? Uh, or send them to all different working factors with a warning? Is their prerogative? With a warning, technocratic uh, metropolis began to scrape the sky. Mm. With the Big Apple, home of the Columbia University, where both Director in Chief Scott and Vice Director Hubert once stayed together, now finally in our control, Technocracy Inc. Can move forward with its final plan to rebuild the metropolises of America in their own new image. Plan to bulldoze entire blocks and make way for new art deco and modernist themed technocratic architecture. Seems like Chicago, Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, Detroit, LA, and more shall be all turned down and rebuilt anew. The way some classist buys a capital city plan, the works of Robert Moses, or the colonial city planners of our northeastern cities, shall be entirely eradicated, paved over in gold, and shine to bring perfect prosperity and efficiency under the glorious and ingenious planning of the technocratic thought. We shall build efficient metropolitan utopias free of waste and want. The director in chief speaks. <clears throat> Stepping before the crowd forum, 
Director in Chief Howard Scott prepared to give a standing address, or standard address, to the hundreds of people sitting before him on the current goals, successes, and failures of a new technocratic regime. However, what should have been a simple routine debriefing to an auditorium of his peers and political allies soon turned into an embarrassing fit, as Scott fumbled over his words, stuttering and sweating like a nervous wreck. It would seem that despite his imposing, tall figures and boisterous, enigmatic personality, all of Scott's charisma melted away before large crowds and our beloved director was reduced to a bright red and sweaty, um, stuttering mess by the end of his speech. Now, with concerned applause and murmurs that something might be wrong, Scott quickly bowed and left the stage before puking his lunch up in the backroom bathroom. We always delivered the necessary info, the inability to speak to the masses is not a good look for the mantra on the United Continent, so the whole situation has been brushed under the rug and hidden from the public attention. Perhaps we should hire a speech therapist. Look at his outfit. Public speaking is not his forte, it would seem. Look at that. That looks really cool. But I apologize that we have to do it like this, because this kind of really sucks. Well, weekly stability 10, plus 10%. Holy shnikes. <clears throat> That's insane. Man, my god. That's actually really freaking good. Holy crap, we're already maxed out already, but you know, whatever. Uh, nothing there for World War Support, but you know, I apologize for having these cons commands, but you know, the game is, uh, well, the game is the game, so. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check it, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.